Per Ericsson. So here we are in Sweden and we are on our way to the two Michelin star restaurant Daniel Berlin in Skåne Tranås. As you can see, I'm driving in Audi A5 e-tron that runs on biogas. And as you all know, biogas is made from waste from restaurants and the food industry. Audi is focusing on sustainability and so are the top chefs in Sweden and in the rest of the world. Let's see if you can combine a taste of Sweden and how you can link that to a more sustainable and environmental consciousness. If you were to explain for somebody that's never been here uh, about your style of cooking, what would you say? I would say that we try to cook off uh, produce from this area. We try to maybe uh, tell the story about uh, southern Sweden. I think it's uh, so important when you travel or plan trip somewhere uh, that you feel where you are. I think that's super important and that's what we try to tell. To be able to create your wonderful dishes, where do you find the, the right produce or products to be able to do that? We have so many uh, different type of uh, producers. Uh, we are surrounded by them and uh, we try to, to only use produce from uh, south of Sweden and also actually a little bit from uh, Denmark. We find uh, most of the produce uh, from our own garden, of course. And also during this season, uh, uh, we produce a lot. And actually during the summertime, we, we, we use, everything we use in the restaurant is from the garden. Then we also have uh, beautiful lambs uh, butchered at Appeltops uh, Slaktery outside the village. Uh, we have amazing fish that uh, we take from the, from the west side. Uh, we try to keep, keep everything uh, from this area. You find um, a lot of inspiration just walking around in the garden. And uh, everything, especially this year, goes so fast. Uh, so you also have to be very, very creative to be able to um, put uh, produce that is ready. You can put it on the menu and also you can choose when to put it on the menu. You can choose the size. Uh, you can choose in which stage the vegetables, for example, is ready. And that's, uh, for me, is, uh, it's uh, happiness. What are you looking for in the produce or in the product? What specific ingredients are you looking for? We, we of course, search for the extraordinary flavors, uh, often in simple vegetables uh, that maybe you have you're quite used to eat, but here you can eat it exactly in the right time when the vegetable is on top. And for me, that's the big difference. In a restaurant, you need to have like a reference. You need to know what's good and what is bad. You learn, you learn how to do it and you learn how to, to taste something that is extremely good. And often it's, you find it in the most simple things. It doesn't have to be very exclusive produce. It can be simple ones like an onion or an apple or a potato. But that's also for me to be a chef. It's, uh, it's about uh, taking the simple things and make them delicious. Many of the top chefs in the world uh, are using the concept of no waste kitchen. What's your take on that? It's uh, very important in a restaurant today 
to think about that. It's it's important for uh, the nature. It's important for the restaurants and also the economy. We have to be aware of uh, what's happening in the world right now. If we can uh, make a change in uh, high-end restaurants like this, uh, it will also spread. We have a big garden. If we have food waste or it often goes back into the garden again uh, as a fertilizer. But we try to use every produce and uh, everything uh, what's on the produce, even if it's like uh, fish uh, or meat or uh, vegetable. It's, uh, there are so many delicious small things in a produce. That's, um, it, it's only the, the knowledge of how to cook it that can, you know, uh, can uh, decide uh, the menu or you, if you know how to cook it, it will be delicious and it's easily going on the menu. Um, we've been working a lot with, uh, for example, the whole fish. You use the head, uh, you use the scale, you use the skin. Um, and uh, for me it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important. If you use one small part of uh, a good produce, you also have a responsibility to use the other parts. And um, if you're a good chef, you can do it. Do you think that there is a concept that you could call the taste of Sweden? Now I think uh, there is actually. It's also because now we are proud of uh, what we have here. We don't have to hide it or not tell people about it. I think uh, what we do uh, now is that we try to tell the story about, for example, at this restaurant, we try to tell the story about this area of Sweden. And, and um, it's, it's also, um, uh, I think that changed the last years, maybe last 10, 15 years, because now we notice that we, we actually have good produce in, in Sweden. Uh, before you had to order from France or from Italy or, uh, for us anyway, it's about uh, making a choice. Um, if you don't have the right and high quality, uh, we choose not to serve it. And it's uh, quite logical actually to things li like that, I think. Um, so so um, the taste of Sweden, I think, uh, it's about what we have here. And uh, if you are in the south, you have a taste down here. Maybe you have traditions and flavors that we use. Uh, if you're up in the north, uh, they have some uh, traditions and flavors that they're using. And I think that's also the most interesting thing about uh, when you travel. It's about different flavors in different areas in a country. Now you got your two Michelin stars uh, that are always packed with people here. Uh, you have to wait for a half a year to get a table here. You're well known not only in Sweden, also in the rest of the world as being one of the top chefs in Scandinavia. Where will you go from now? I'm not satisfied and I don't think uh, if you are you should not uh, do a restaurant like this. It's about being better of course and uh, to learn and to constantly try to evolve and uh, create something, uh, something new and something that people want to come back to. And uh, now with the second Michelin star, you have, of course, uh, a responsibility to deliver an amazing gastronomic experience to all the guests who arrived. They have high expectations. Uh, but still, it feels that we're in the beginning of something um, and uh, we will just keep on uh, pushing this. Uh, I still love what I'm doing. I love this restaurant. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's just uh, about to try to improve. Uh, I have a great team. I'm so happy and proud of them. And, uh, 
I think together we can we we can be so much better. So uh, let's see what the future have have uh, have to give us. You know? If you were to give an advice to a young person that wants to become a chef, what would you say? I would say be humble. Uh, learn from different cultures and kitchens. It's not about what you can do or, or what you've seen before. It's about how much you want to do it. Just try to, to see different things. Uh, and then you will find your own uh, way of cooking uh, sooner or later. <laughs>